Shashank, you have joined hands with Megashri NGO to launch a global sports pickleball championship tournament in India. Yes. Now, we all know that you have a lot of interest in dancing apart from making movies. So, what is the objective behind your association with this NGO and with this game? So, I think my first of all, uh, I have also a long association with sports. I used to, since the age of uh, almost four and a half, five, I've been playing tennis. And then uh, played tennis at quite a high level right till the junior ITF. So, that was the International Tennis Federation run tournaments. And then had a fascination to play cricket, which almost every boy in India has had yeah. at some level or the other that uh, we are going to play that. So, I've always had a fascination towards sports all my life. Living in Nasik, I've had the good fortune of playing multiple sports. So, when I came across this sport called pickleball, uh, which, is, uh, which has been there for m m lots of years. In fact, it started in the 60s in America. It's been in India since 2008. But not very well publicized or, you know, not many people knew of it. But when I started playing it about two and a half, three months back, I have a background in tennis, so I found it very easy to play. But I just fell in love with the game. And uh, I almost became an addict. Where my wife, I think, has threatened me four or five times that if you go to play at night, I'm going to divorce you. So that was the same thing came to me. And then I found a good opportunity to invest in it. So Global Sports uh, is a company which, it is, which has been running the game for a very long time. And they've been organizing tournaments, but this is the first time we are organizing it in such a structured and on such a large scale level with prize money and stuff. And Megashire NGO has come on board. Megashire has been doing great work in the field of education. And I think it was a nice way to kind of come in. Our real motive is to create an alternative sport whereby young kids across the country can play the game and also have enough money in it so that hopefully in the near future, they can make a career with it. So that is the broader goal. And the starting step is this tournament, which is happening on 5th, 6th and 7th May. We've had a tremendous response thanks to all the celebrities who are supporting it and the advertising that we have done. Some of the best players in India and Asia are going to be playing this game. Um, and we're just excited to kind of start this journey. So pickleball is a mix of badminton, ping pong, or table tennis and lawn tennis. Correct. So please tell us more about the game and how accessible it is to uh, to a common man. You know, it's actually very simple. So yeah, it's a hybrid between TT, tennis, badminton and other sports. It's to explain in very simple things. It's a game played on a badminton court with the net not being high and being low. It's played with something called a paddle, which is like a hybrid of a TT racket and a tennis racket and a plastic ball. The best thing is you don't need to have played any sport to play this. It is very easy to pick it up. And uh, how accessible it is, it is as simple that if you have a building mein badminton court, then you can put the court niche gira do till ground level. So, die fit ka net. Get a paddle and a ball. It, it's something which is available from 200 rupees to 800 rupees to professional rackets which are expensive. And you don't need any other infrastructure and you can just start playing it. So, literally, 800 rupees or 1000 rupees mein, we can have four people who can start playing this game. So that is how accessible it is for India. And I really feel for our country, it's the best suited sport, whereby NGOs, people who love sports, people who have schools, they can make a small court and get all their students to start playing it. And you never know in the next two or three years, this might become a viable career option for so many athletes. So then, uh, what is the big big objective behind this venture of yours? How do you see this pickleball game uh, growing in India? What is the larger uh, plan? So, I think it's already making its uh, foot, uh, foothold in India. We are already representing India on the Asia level and the Pacific level. Uh, in fact, some of India's uh, young boys and girls and 35 age bracket people are already top players in Asia. So, we already have a presence. This sport is already being considered in, by the Olympic Committee. So, in the current Olympics that's going to happen, the next Olympics, you're already going to have a showcase for pickleball. And I'm hoping, if not the next, within the next eight years, this is going to become an Olympic sport. You know, the minute this becomes an Olympic sport, you have an opportunity for our country to win multiple medals in this sport on a world level. Now, if we have to be ready for that, the groundwork needs to be done from now. So that even we can't wait ki art sal bad jab this game will become into Olympics, then we will start. We will be ready. 
we should be ready the other thing is even on a, a macro level it's a great sport to play world over this is a sport whereby young uh, first of all because it's a more skill based game than power game be, uh, power based game i think indians will have a great opportunity on the world level not just asia level we can play, uh, compete with the best players in the world secondly Maybe. this game is huge in america this can be a huge game for people who want scholarships abroad who want to study and train abroad it's already getting popular in australia and america and europe so i think it's a sport of the future the other good advantage is, is because of physicality you can play this uh, sport professionally for 25 30 years if as a 15 year old you become a professional you can play it till the age of 40 45 now that gives you a great opportunity to make a career so i think it has all the makings of the sport of the future it has all the makings to be a sport which india can adopt and make it its own and i am just hoping that with whatever efforts we are making right now we can really help create this ecosystem and infrastructure for the country and also healthier option for for today's video game obsessed generation absolutely and trust me this game is addictive i started playing this game only two and a half months back and i look for reasons to skip and miss everything to go and start playing the game my lab literally every evening almost two hours i'm dedicated to playing it it's a great fitness option uh, scientifically proven that any racket sport or paddle sport helps in hand eye coordination and is great for the brain and more than anything else it's a great community game you can go make good friends all people can play it's competitive it fulfills everything you need as an athlete so you know abhishek bachan owns a badminton a kabaddi and a football team right. srk has his night rider uh, sports entity ranbir owns a football team is this your venture like an investment beyond movies it definitely is an investment beyond movies but i don't want to right now say that i'm comparing myself to any one of them because they are also invested in sports which have a huge legacy and those are sports which are already very well established on the india and uh, you know world level uh, yes that this is one of my desires that i can become a sports entrepreneur with this but right now there's a lot of work required in this sport on the ground root level like because i come from a sporting background i know how district level matches are i know how you know uh, city level matches are we are trying to right now promo, promo, uh, provide ecosystem on that level uh, for it to become a league for a tournament of that level for us to become tv friendly or come on any of the big channels i think we still have time but we also live in the time of social media where things can accelerate much faster than earlier yeah so i'm really hoping that we put in the right efforts i get partners across the board who are like minded luckily even in this small journey so far i have met a lot of amazing people who are ready to support us whether it's all our sponsors people like mega shrey i love mumbai foundation or fila the sports manufacturers everyone has reached out and said that you know what we are one with your vision tell us what you need so i'm hoping that i find more such partners and we can truly accelerate the great growth of this sport but our true victory will be when young people start playing this game on a more regular basis and it becomes a professional end do you also like to uh, integrate this in in one of your stories like it being part of your movies because film has a wider reach yeah is there also so, a plan uh maybe too early right now i mean once i think stories are best told about underdogs so hopefully first we can create a few underdog stories from pickleball and then yeah. it will find its natural course in the movies kabhi kabhi just to promote it when you try and write a story about it it doesn't seem authentic i think our idea is that uh, luckily i'm a filmmaker i have access to a lot of uh, you know uh, influential people who can help us take this game to the masses and right now honestly all the support i require from all my fraternity friends and all is nothing which is got to do with finance or anything it just to help us reach this sport to every house like right now i have to explain someone what is pickleball hopefully in 6 months i won't have to explain oh, no. and yeah, even yeah. if that is our victory after 6 months ki logo ko ye nahi bolna pad raha hai ki pickleball kya hai i think we would have reached a uh, uh, way ahead but you know uh, i want to digress a little bit and talk about uh, your movies you know we often heard actor talking about first day jitters as a director and writer how you feel on the first few days of the shoot do you like to start a film uh, with an easier light scene or or which scene would you prefer like to start a film with 
so two things one is i am very process driven i am not a very result driven person uh, so because of that i really work hard every day to put the process in place so then of course it kind of takes care of the nervousness and the jitters because my result ke bare mein nahi soch raha i'm really just hoping that whatever we have planned we can execute it to the best of our ability of course first day nerves are always very good to have as well it's nice to be a bit nervous so that you are on the ball of the foot and not too relaxed in case in if my movie has a song sequence i ideally like to start with a song sequence because uh, in my experience and whenever possible i mean sometimes it's not possible because you don't have all the actor dates or the set is expensive to build or you've not got the song it can be multiple but if all the factors work out and if my film has a song sequence i ideally like to start with a song sequence because it helps everyone start with a fun atmosphere you get to bond with everyone in 3 days of not a serious scene but it can be a fun song sequence it really helps the unit come together the actors also to ease out and then slowly we start getting into the scenes but i tend to maybe not pick up the most dramatic scene first but man. after the song i will pick up the probably the trickiest scene in the film and start shooting that first because if the actors nail that then the rest of the film is very easy and the sur gets set so that's normally the process i follow then talking about being the first what generally is your first reaction when you see the first cut of your film for the first time i mean you know what happens with a uh, directors uh, working on a script every day is that we are doing so much work on a scene to save in level that we are not really waiting for the first cut i think the one thing i try and assess is that the script i had written i hope i have done a better job than the script because that's my job as a director because we uh, asked uh, the same question to some directors few years ago and everybody said they they sometimes feel that material is close to what they've envisioned but not entirely what they've imagined you know in my experience you have realized that you never end up making uh, the film you had imagined in terms of its 100% because there are some things you do better than the script and there are some things that you couldn't achieve and there are multiple factors i mean when you go on to make a scene right from location to actors to junior artists to weather to permissions to suddenly barish ho gayi you don't know what are the so many obstacles that you are dealing with so there are days you do a better job than you had imagined and there are days when you are like oh shit i didn't achieve what i wanted to so i think overall you try and assess that have i done a good job as a director and especially i am a writer director so i have to split yeah. the uh, job and say that this was my job as a writer i hope i've done a better job as a director on the material and then put it into perspective and see that what have you achieved but in general i'm not extremely self critical of my work but at the same time i'm not supremely happy either i managed to kind of break down every day at its time and say that let's follow a process every single day and uh, i try and go back to my first instinct every time because there is a certain reaction you get for the first time when you had narrated a piece you know with every narration after that the di- uh, reactions keep diluting because people know the script so sometimes yeah. when you see a theme you might not find it humorous because aapko to har joke pata hai so you have to go back to the first narration to remember no yaar this scene was funny it is still funny i don't find it funny because i have heard it 100 times and i am not but i need to trust my instinct and know that the audiences will also react to the scene you know you have worked with subhash gai uh, for two films uh, as a director assistant I've on yuvraj and on black and white subhash gai was widely known as a showman of indian cinema he has a distinct distinctive style especially shooting drama and usage of trolley Absolutely. and trains now as a successful director yourself uh, what do you think was the biggest learning for you while working with subhash ji oh it's so funny you are asking me this question because just two hours back i was talking to somebody about subhash ji and his teachings so i've had the good fortune of studying from his film school also and uh, there were many a days when he would be on the film school and we would share he would share his knowledge with us that there are two things that i learned very precisely for him from him one was he would always speak about the character of the hero and uh, it, it is still relevant i mean i look at films today like a pushpa a kgf and stuff and i actually see they are all derivatives of subhash gai cinema the characters like talia or you know his characters of karma his characters of ram lakhan 
those are the characters which have probably inspired all of us to make these kind of movies and he always said that the male hero should be like krishna he would say he should be naughty he should be playful he should be a savior he should uh, respect his mother and he should also respect his stepmother you know sir subhash ji would tell us this and if you look at all the big characters in films you will find characteristics of krishna in them they are oh. naughty as well they are playful they are saviors and they have this unique relationship with their mothers and that's why so many of those his characters were so legendary you know and they kind of stuck with you and the other thing he always told all the young kids was be ready for the opportunity don't wait for the opportunity to work on yourself keep working hard every day you never know when the opportunity might come the day it comes you can't ask for more time you need to be ready so i remember these two things you know very clearly from his perspective and that's two things i try to try to keep in my life as well you know you told me a uh, few years ago when we spoke like rang de basanti was the film that changed your life yeah. and had deep impact on on your filmmaking absolutely do you also imagine how you will be shooting a particular scene when you are writing something that you think will stand out will be like a stamp of shishank khitan yes i'm i'm trying to discover my voice i'm trying to create something uh, figure out something which is going to be my uh, cinematic presence i think to a certain extent and i won't say it with any pride ki bahut ho gaya hai somewhere with my style of writing i'm trying to create a voice of how i write romance or how i write humor it's still not established but i'm hoping i will find a clearer voice and do that yes cinematically also there is a desire that i create a, a visual piece which becomes relevant and becomes almost expected from my kind of cinema you know like as you said like even with a rohit shetty what rohit shetty does immediately you know it's a rohit shetty film right so i would love to create that i am working towards that but even at the same time i also belong to a, a school of training where i'm also far more experimental in nature like i'm not happy just doing a particular genre of movies ideally i would like to do all kinds of genres i might succeed in some i might fail in some but my attempt is to keep making different kinds of cinema to keep challenging myself as well so when i make a govinda naam mera it is my desire to create a comic thriller universe or yeah. a world and try that i'm also hoping that with every film i do i push myself out of my comfort zone as well and then get in that same thing find the balance of what i want to make so yeah it's tricky but uh, i'm hoping we achieve that and finally uh, what's the big plan where all you'll be taking pickleball tournament uh, apart from mumbai so with global sports whom i have associated with they already hold tournaments in goa as well so goa and mumbai are two places i think right now our bigger uh, objective is to first cement our positions in mumbai really become a full on ecosystem right from playing coaching based to the bigger tournaments and then creating the ecosystem across india there is anyways a lot of people playing it across the country i am hoping that with our presence we are able to reach out to more people and show them the way of how we can make this sport bigger so really right now the idea is to focus completely on mumbai and maharashtra and then and goa and hopefully then with that grow further Shisham Khitan, all the best for all your ventures. Thank you so much for your time and best of luck. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you.